it's the last day here on our long, long series. Snow and Kurt are gonna head out now. We're gonna miss him so much. Oh, we will see y'all again, don't worry. Next time y'all see Kurt, we will both be completely vaccinated. Yay! Guys, thanks for everything, man. It's been a blast. It has. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Stay in touch. Hasta luego, adios, Snow and Kurt. Look at that van. We'll see it again soon. <laughs> That thing is a tank. Adios, amigos. Well, we said goodbye to Kurt and Snow today, but we got a little surprise for you guys. We got some van friends rolling in right now we haven't seen since Mexico. Should be good to see them. So we found Juan Carlos and Laura. They just rolled up as soon as Snow and Kurt left. Uh, we met them first time in Mexico, right? They were staying a couple months at a hostel. Yeah, we're super stoked to see them again. It's the first time we've seen them since Mexico. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> woo! <laughs> so we're gonna go do some van chores and then chill back at the best beach spot where we've been all week. We're gonna show our new friends this lovely paradise we've found. So food is always a big part of our trips around the world. So we always want to get like the local thing, the best thing around, you know, we have to try out the local flavors. Usually they have like a way for me to still try it even though I don't eat meat. So we got the local flavor. It's called rice and beans, and even in Spanish they call it rice and beans. It's not called arroz con frijoles. It's made by the Garifuno community. They speak English um, and Spanish. So it's rice and beans cooked in coconut. I don't know if it's coconut milk or coconut water, but either way, I was so stoked to try it. I love coconut, I love rice and beans. Let's check it out. So I got rice and beans with patacones and a salad. And Danny got rice and beans with chicken, patacones and a salad. It's delicious. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how tasty these rice and beans are. I mean, I love rice and beans, so I knew it was gonna be good. But dang. I like it more than gallo pinto or asada. You like it more than gallo pinto? Yeah, it's kind of like rice and beans mixed, but this one is the best rice and beans mixed I've had. But gallo pinto was one of our favorites. We, the, in Nicaragua, it's served all day long. I love it. It's served with bana green banana chips. Oh, it's, it was my favorite thing. I would get it all the time, and it was only like, two or three dollars every time for a huge plate of gallo pinto with chips and salad and uh, they do serve it in Costa Rica but only at in the morning time which is kind of sad for me because we usually eat breakfast in the van so I can't get it at lunchtime but for lunch they have casado which is rice separate from the beans which I, I don't know I don't like it as much as gallo pinto or these rice and beans, which are just fantastic. Love it! Super bomb. Super, super bomb. Definitely have to come and get rice and beans when you're at the Caribe. Wow, back here again at Punta Uva with two vans. Guys up on the roof here, cutting things. Yes! Wow, so that's where we spent the last time. Snow and Kerb over there before that. And here we are, posted up with the other van friends now from Cuba. Great people, they got this RV, self-converted some more of it. And now we got all the hammocks out, chilling.
Got it all set up here. Somebody just got a coconut. So we're back at the best campsite ever. I'm relaxing in a hammock. Our friends have their hammock up. Danny and Juan Carlos just went out for a swim. Great day. What's up? Snorkel report for today. Visibility is good over here, <laughs> not over there. <laughs> good to know, thank you. Yeah, actually, Juan Carlos took the mask, though. Yeah? He went out through the cut in the reef there. Yeah. And so it's it's better visibility because there's not waves and stuff because you're in this little ravine. Mm -hmm. the reef. He went out pretty far over here. He said he saw some fish and corals. So. Nice. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Very nice. Well, it's been a super chill day here. There were Cubans, so we introduced him to a Cuban friend and everybody's hanging out, went for a snorkel. Just living the good life here and taking it easy one more day. Gonna be sad to leave this place. Coconut just fell off the tree. Look at that machete technique. Oh, wow. Oh, ho, ho. dude, you got skills. That is perfect right there. Yeah, a little bit. What? Oh, and that's it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm from the Caribbean. Yeah. Just have to, just have to crack it open now, right? Yeah, put a hole in there. Yeah. See, the crack is already there. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of... Oh, damn. Skills, Very Juan good. Carlos. Very good. <laughs> Dude, oh, for me or for you? Sure. You want to try? Oh, my gosh. Drink it. So now we got all the juice out on Carlos. Much to film here. It's just that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Killing it, man. All right. And after all this time here, we're really gonna miss this spot. Punta Uva, one of the top spots our whole history of Annan. And it's been great to be able to spend some time here with some friends and really enjoy the area. It's been amazing watching these waves crash over the reef. All this area is shallow because there's a reef right below and the waves come from every which way crashing into each other. Looks like the Devil's Reef out there. Get to watch it one last night. And this time, we're closer than ever to this roiling fury of waves. Well, thank you guys so much for watching our series with Snow and Kurt. We've had an awesome time down here on the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to tell you guys a little bit about ourselves and our van life story. After watching a ton of YouTube videos, we bought the van in January 2018 and the build took three months to complete. Building the van was super wild for us because I'm not really handy, or I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny because the very first screw, the drill bit slipped off, you know, and I cut myself. The very first screw, I cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> but I think the, the biggest moment doing the build was when you make that first hole through the van. And that was for this roof van up here. 
What a rush. <laughs> so after we finished our van build, we got married and started living in the van full time. Actually, our DJ at the wedding gave us our plaque right here. And at the start, when we started living in the van, we didn't have the lofty goal of trying to get to Argentina like we are now. At first we thought, okay, let's do the USA for a year. If everything goes well, we'll drive next up to Alaska the next year. And after that, if everything's still going well, we'll head south. So our first year in the van, we went to Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, wanted to hit some of those really great American spots, as well as going around a lot. I had already had 50 states checked off, but now Emily's at uh, 48. Yeah, yes, now I am. We had gone to 46 states total, because that's how many states Graham has. <laughs> <laughs> So during the winter, it's a big debate over van lifers. What do you do? Our first winter, we had skied for 50 days at 36 different <laughs> ski mountains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. We, we were the first year to get an icon pass and wow, we just really, really took advantage of that pass. Yeah, they don't expect you to be able to go to every mountain on the pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that pass was like 600 but some of the mountains each day would be $200 and they would give you five days at those places. And we could sleep in the van, which is free. No, I don't think we ever paid to sleep anywhere in the winter. So we were just sleeping in ski mountain parking lots or close to ski mountain parking lots and just skiing all day until it got dark outside. and. Yeah, working, watching movies, and sleeping <laughs> until the next day where we could ski again. Yeah, a lot of the nights we'd sleep in the parking lot of the ski resort. It might snow a foot, and then you wake up, you don't have to drive anywhere. You're already there. Just, you can wake up a lot later, of course, and wander over to the chairlift, try to get first chair. Yeah. Skiing with the van is amazing. Of course, we had to make a lot of different uh, modifications to the van then. We added a Wabasto heater which connects to the gas tank. So you don't have to worry about filling up some other reservoir. Um, so we were able to spend nights up to negative 10 degrees without really getting cold until yeah, negative 10 degrees. That would be the yeah. edge. <laughs> yeah, that's like the edge. That's when your nose is cold whenever you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's other things you can do, of course. But we also, for the water system, had to add this, um, it's like a cable called heat tape that runs off the DC. 12 volt self-regulating heat tape so we put another switch under the sink for that we turn that on at night I mean, you wouldn't have to worry about leaving open all the cabinets and blasting the heater all night so your water system doesn't freeze up fortunately yeah. our water system's in the van so this van was like was epic perfect. for winter oh. the perfect ski chalet and after going to a lot of ski mountains when i was younger i was really impressed that this van actually handles well in the snow the ProMaster's front wheel drive, I think that does help. Of course, four wheel drive would be nice too. <laughs> but we had chains, we got the max tracks, but we really didn't have to bust them out too often. I remember one time up above Salt Lake City, we got dumped on that night. The snow was over the bottom of the bumper mm. and there we did have to put the chains on to get enough yeah. traction. But once we got out of that, got like two blocks away to the mountain, but the craziest drive of that winter was going over Rabbit Ears Pass in Colorado up to Steamboat Springs. It was a driving blizzard. You couldn't see five feet. I think we were going five miles an hour, super oh. slow, you know, hoping there's some guy up ahead. Sometimes you can kind of <laughs> see where he's going. Ooh, but yeah, we've been through some pretty wild winter. After our first winter, we started to head north for Alaska. We decided to take the Cassiar Highway, which is the Alcan uh, alternative route and we found it so beautiful a lot less people I mean I never actually took the Alaska Highway but there was no there wasn't that many people on it there was a lot of amazing spots to stop and we saw a bear every single day on that highway wow. it was such an amazing journey we took about three weeks to just to get to Alaska really enjoyed our time in Canada and Actually, when I was younger, I did road trip around for seven months in a Honda Accord. Back then, I thought sleeping in a car was evil. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I always slept in a tent every single night. I would put out this quick pitch tent. It was great. And back then, I did do the Alaska Highway up to all the way to the Arctic Circle. But this time, we really wanted to go 
all the way to the Arctic Ocean. So that's called the Dalton Highway in Alaska. It's also called the Hall Road. Around that time, we got in touch on Instagram with another pro master that was traveling the Alaska Highway. Exploring in a van is their Instagram handle. We said, hey, you guys want to drive to the Arctic Ocean with us? <laughs> <laughs> they weren't actually sure if they yeah. wanted to go all the way to the ocean. They said, we'll definitely go to the Arctic Circle at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We met up with them in a Walmart parking lot in <laughs> Fairbanks, Alaska, <laughs> and headed north. Having friends with us made it so much more special, too. Mm -hmm. We found some great spots, uh, had campfires, got to know each other over some beers. Well, at the start, Scott and Chelsea weren't too sure if they wanted to go all the way to the end of the Dalton Highway, but once we got to the Arctic Circle, we were having such a good time, they said, all right, let's do it. <laughs> When you actually get to the Arctic Ocean on the Dalton Highway in Alaska, um, it's uh, all oil fields. So you can't really drive all the way to the ocean. You have to take a tour to get that final like mile, maybe. <laughs> I yeah. don't even know if it's a mile. But So we took a, a tour with Scott and Chelsea, and we were able to swim in the Arctic Ocean. It was amazing. There was icebergs right near us. <laughs> it was so cold. I thought that my legs were going to stop working. I started like crawling a little bit trying to get out. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, I think that was probably one of the best experiences with the van. So we made it to the very end of the road with Scott and Chelsea, but we thought this isn't the end of the road. This is just the start. And we got to make it all the way down the Pan American Highway down to Argentina. What was really insane about being up there too was we entered the Dalton Highway on the summer solstice. So it was light 24 seven while we were up there. It kind of makes you feel like you're going a little crazy at first, <laughs> but later, I loved it because I always get insomnia, I stay up late, and I actually caught a fish at 2 a.m., an Arctic grayling, yeah. <laughs> still up above the Arctic Circle. So after Alaska, we decided to head down to the continental U.S. and spend another winter skiing in the van because it is amazing. So we had to cut that ski season a little bit short because we wanted to avoid the rainy seasons in Central America. We plan to enter Mexico March 1st and everybody knows what happens next mm. the pandemic hit at first it looked like those restrictions wouldn't happen in mexico we were all the way at the southern tip of baja on a beach pretty much living on this beach for a few weeks the police came and said hey we're closing the beaches for everybody you guys gotta go but they let us spend one last night there so we had a campfire with our nomad friends we all talked about our ideas for the future and most of us decided to rent a place down there. So we had just gotten some Brita whenever we had to go into lockdown. She was about three months old and... Oh. Oh, Brita! She learned how to turn on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up renting a place in Toros Santos, Baja California Sur for about three months. The day they opened the beach, the first day, was our second wedding anniversary <laughs> <laughs> so we went back to that same beach spot we loved and shortly after took the ferry to the mainland of mexico from la paz to mazatlan mm -hmm. and ever since then we've been traveling slowly but steadily southward we got a lot more adventures to share with you guys so hopefully you'll follow us all the way down to the bottom of argentina and maybe antarctica <laughs> <laughs> all right see ya Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs>